Downhill ski racing is the ultimate test of nerve, courage, and ability. But this isn't a typical downhill ski race. This one involves teams. Today, men and women race for their country. Two-person teams reaching speeds of 90 miles per hour and separated from each other by only a few feet. And it's not just one run down Aspen Mountain. It'll be close to 80. They'll brush aside fatigue and compete through the night. There is no event like it in the world of ski racing. This is the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. We're in Aspen, Colorado for a downhill ski race. But this isn't your usual downhill ski race. This one goes on for 24 hours. That's right, for 24 hours. Teams have come from all over the world to compete. And they're going to be racing down this mountain over and over, including right through the night. It's the Land Rover, 24 hours of Aspen. This winter is the sixth annual event. Let's take a moment to review last season's grueling competition. What makes it so difficult is that most downhill ski racers only know what it's like preparing themselves mentally and physically for one high-speed run down a mountain. Chris Kent and Felix Belchek were former members of the Canadian World Cup team. They had attacked the toughest of international courses. Here in Aspen last year, they used their experience, strength, and ability to go all out through the night when the visibility became poor and fatigue an awesome experience. Swiss racer Andre Kenchi's partner injured himself the day before the race. Kenchi raced by himself for 24 hours, but as 79 laps were completed, the team which would claim the title of last year's Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen champion would be the proud, if not exhausted, Canadian team. Chris Kent and Felix Belchuk. They're back again to defend their title. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Biatti, and welcome to this year's Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. It could not be a more beautiful day for ski racing. And working with me, a young woman who raced last year, grew up right here in Aspen, Colorado, Katie Harvey. Now, glad to have you with me. But how was it last year racing for 24 hours? Oh, well, the beginning was good, and, and it was an exciting race, but it's definitely grueling. Through the night, I mean, it gets cold. You're lonely out here. I mean, tell us, what is it like? Uh, your legs hurt, your back hurts, and each run you're hoping to knock down one more. But the volunteers there are there, and they, they really keep you going. And you might feel like maybe you're kind of happy being with me this year rather than <laughs> racing. <laughs> this year I get to stay warm. <laughs> well, it should be a great competition. John Oates of Holland Oates is one of the forerunners who actually lives here in Aspen. What do you think, John? I can hardly see you with that outfit on. Well, I'll tell you what, it's the first year they made us wear helmets, but it's probably a good idea. I mean, we're getting uh, more comfortable I get with this mountain the faster I'm going, so we'll, uh, we're going to have a good time. Well, you just got married two days ago. Are you in good oh, form? This is an unbelievable weekend. I got married and uh, having a beautiful day here in Aspen, running to downhill. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Okay, we're going to be cheering for you. Have a good run. Thanks, Bob. John loves to ski, and we're going to see him participate in many of this week's activities a little bit later. 11 teams participating this week, and the number one team off from Germany, Michael Feit, the oldest competitor at 37, and his partner, Detlef Schiller, who's 32 years of age. Last year, the Germans dropped out after 41 of the 79 laps. And the Aspen women's team, Katie McBride and Gela Sutro. Lots of support from them. Sucho is from Sweden, now living in Aspen. And the team who has been here so many years. From Kitzbühel, Austria, 26-year-old Alexander Naglic and Christopher Reindel. They won in 1992. And the Aspen women lower down on the course, skiing very closely together. Last year's winning team, they're both 33 years of age, Chris Kent and Phyllis Belchek from Canada. Andy Mill starts them off, and these two racers have the experience to do well again. The U.S. women, Noel Lyons from Boulder, Colorado, and Pam Fletcher from Boston, both 31. Lyons, the world extreme champion, Pam Fletcher, six-time U.S. national champion. From Great Britain, Malcolm Erskine and Bill Gaylord. 
Gaylord is actually a student at Columbia University. The U.S. women on the course in a good downhill tuck. It'll be imperative that they stay as loose and relaxed as possible if they're going to be able to maintain their pace for 24 hours. From France is Sophie Charlet and Fabienne Sarguez, the first co-ed team ever to compete in the 24 hours of Aspen. This should be an interesting experience. For the first time, a team from Argentina, Lopez Davalos and Jorge Barrios. From the resort of Los Leños, they're gonna be working in Aspen throughout the winter as ski instructors. The U.S. men, both wearing special speed suits, Jeff Hamilton, 27, and Dave Epperson, 29. Both competing on the North American Pro Tour. The Aspen men, Tyler Williams, 23 years of age, and Nate Bryan, who actually comes from Vail. Bryan's a former member of the U.S. ski team. From Switzerland, it's Andre Kinchi from Davos. His original partner was injured in training yesterday, just like last year, and he picked up Andy Hofer, also from Davos, to be his partner, a fill-in at the last minute. The German team at the bottom, and the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen is underway. Stay with us. Dinner is served. They had a Ming vase. They had a Rembrandt. Even Louis XVI's favorite chair. But of all their prized possessions, there's only one they haven't had to replace. The Range Rover. Range Rover. The world's most capable luxury vehicle. Hey, Follies fans, pull up a chair and sit down. Because you don't want to miss Sports Illustrated's fabulous Follies Fun Pack. Featuring two amazing new videos. Basketball's NBA Rewind, plus the NFL's 100 Greatest Follies. Both free with your paid subscription to SI. In NBA Rewind, Ahmad is always near. Working here. NBA stars will do this and also that. In the NFL's 100 Greatest Follies, you get the funniest of all time. So hang on to your shirt, because this could hurt. Call now, and Jolly Ball is what you'll see. It comes in your fun pack free. Get 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. Use your credit card. SI and your free fun pack make great gifts. Shake a leg. Call now and get both fun pack videos free from SI. There is nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Back at the 24 hours of Aspen, the Swiss team at the bottom, hurrying to get their skis off to get back on the lift and go all the way back up the mountain and do it one more time. And at the top of the mountain, it's the Austrian team getting quickly into their skis. And as they skate off to get started again, let's take a look at this course. The speed picks up fast. We can see little pine boughs that have been placed for visibility. They're now in an area called Dipsy Doodle. And the racers so close to each other, drafting each other. This is not something you'd recommend for recreational ski racers. And now it's Pump House with big camel bumps. As the day and night go on, this will be a dangerous part of the course. Another look at the racers and exactly how close they are to each other. Going 70 to 80 miles per hour as they go into the air at chair number three. And as they drop into Spar Gulch, the fastest part of the course, this is what it looked like at nighttime. This entire mountain has all been lit just for this occasion, but it's not consistent throughout the entire run. And now on the road as they come into Kleenex Corner, this is the big left-hand turn. This will get rough as racers go through it over and over again. And now they drop on to Little Nell with Aspen in the background. A very fast part of the downhill race course. An awesome run. Think about it, not just once, but up to 80 times over 24 hours. The Aspen men below Pump House. Williams, 23 years of age, 
Bryant, 24. They have youth on their side. And as the Canadians come around clean next corner, you have to wonder if that age might play a factor. They're much older. The U.S. women certainly have a lot of spirit. Noel Lyons and Pam Fletcher. To clean next corner, Jeff Hamilton almost falls, slips way out wide. His teammate Dave Everson has fallen quite a ways behind. As he comes out, he even goes wider. And right behind them, the U.S. men. They're going to pass us this time. Right now, we're having a tough time staying together right now. Dave's skis aren't running as well as we'd like them to be running, so he's a little bit behind right now. And these guys are going to pass us this round. That's fine. We can't really worry about it. In ski racing, you don't race against people. You race against yourself and, and the clock. And it's been, more than anything else, our minds are playing tricks on us as the night progresses. So you don't worry about people here. You worry about yourself and what you're doing. So let those guys pass us. Get out with their race. And if they win, good job. And if we come in second right behind them, that's even great. And if we pass them back, that's even better. At the top, another battle going on between the two women's team, the Aspen women have taken a small lead over the U.S. women. And here are the U.S. women as they approach Kleenex Corner. Taking a very wide, smooth, very conservative line. As the race continues down Aspen Mountain, this man certainly has a relaxed view. We saw Joe Notes forerunning a short while ago, and earlier this week he hosted a charity for Aspen youth groups called the John Oates Rock and Soul Party at the Hotel Jerome. Aspen Finest all showed up. And what a beautiful night with some snow drizzling down. The party also benefited the Sunshine Kids, youngsters stricken with cancer who were brought to Aspen each winter. And as the auction took hold with many items from all over the town, everybody contributing. <laughs> and everybody thinking that they would win. The dancing commenced. John Oates entertained. Andy Milt provided the auction. I have here, right? 2,000, do I hear 3,000? 1,000. We have 14. And as John Oates continued, the party went on into the night end for a worthy cause. The kids of Aspen and the Sunshine Kids. The Land Rover, 24 Hours of Aspen is being brought to you by Land Rover, the maker of legendary British off-road vehicles. And by American Airlines, the official airline of the U.S. ski team. I'm a much better skier after seeing this video only once. It reinforces your good habits and it helps you correct your bad habits. It helped me get through the mogul field. It made my turn stronger. You can practice it in your own living room. I learned from it. Introducing the video that's guaranteed to make you a better skier. It's called Perfect Form featuring Jean-Claude Keeley and it's free with Snow Country Magazine. Snow Country is a multi-dimensional magazine. It talks about snowboarding, hiking, cross-country skiing, canoeing, biking, the best resorts for your dollar, the best equipment, the best prices. Whether it's spring, summer, or fall. Snow Country is a mountain of fun all year long. If you're a summer person, if you're a winter person, it'll show you how to take advantage of the outdoors. So call 800-624-4400. Get your first issue of Snow Country risk-free. Call right now and we'll send you the Follow Me Mountain Guide and our ski equipment guide absolutely free. I can't imagine anybody reading Snow Country and not wanting to be an outdoor person after reading it. I think the first copy of Snow Country that comes across your desk will make you want to subscribe. Tomorrow, 7.30, ESPN. Hi, I'm Anthony Smith, here on behalf of The Watch Program, with a reminder that this time of the year, even the busiest people can find time to watch Sunday Night Football. Bumble, I think. Watch Christmas night when the Lions play the Dolphins.
I'm Lynn Scott for KSBN Radio in Aspen, Colorado. It's the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. We'll be with you throughout the day and night. Right now, after three hours of racing, the Canadians are in the lead. After 10 laps, the Canadians coming into Kleenex Corner have a lead of 13 seconds. The Austrians are in second place, but they seem to be gaining as they come down towards the bottom. And then it's the Aspen men. They're only 19 seconds behind the Canadians. The Swiss standing up, coming through Kleenex Corner. They are 29 seconds behind. The Aspen women, 24 second lead over the US women as they come charging to get onto the gondola. And what is this? The Austrians getting onto the same gondola. Well, they'll get to know each other on the way up. As we see the US women, 34 seconds behind, as we have mentioned, they have their work cut out for them. And the light is getting overcast, and it is hard to see. Malcolm Erskine from Great Britain at the bottom. His partner fell earlier on the course. Still just went like this. Where? I should have stopped to help him, eh? Where did he go down? Is he right over here? Obviously not happy that he did not wait. He said he went down right here. Hey, uh, he's only got one ski. Whoa! And his partner, Bill Gaylord, coming down on one ski, takes another fall. Go get that ski, get it! And now he has no skis at all as he comes into the finish area. Interesting that Gaylord has a dual citizenship between Great Britain and the United States. Looks like he's banged up a little bit. Go, go, go. And apparently his ski is busted. But remember, these competitors have several pair of skis. I think it's absolutely incredible. Uh, I was been working up top all day long and it's only about three and a half hours into it and they still look real ripe. I know they have a long ways to go, but they look like they're going to do it, something I wouldn't be able to do for about 15 minutes. I can't believe how fast they're coming down the mountain. We're standing there watching them. It's incredible. This is the greatest time in Aspen. 24 hours, Land Rover, skiing. It's awesome. The Aspen woman coming into the rolls below Pump House. Katie Harvey rode up the lift with them and talked about drafting. How is it for your first time um, drafting and all that? How are you getting more comfortable? I'm getting more comfortable. Um, Kate is still better staying closer to me. I have a hard time judging exactly how close I can stay and how high I can go when I'm following her without losing her. So I'm working on it and I'm getting better each run. Are you, are you guys passing each other still um, during like slingshotting? Now this is a secret so you can't tell the rest of the teams. But yes, we are, uh, we're slingshotting when we get the chance and it's, it's effective, it's working. So. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, I think the secret is out. Here's a good example of the Swiss coming down, drafting and then slingshotting by with that increased speed from behind. Gives the racer from behind a chance to relax a little bit. And the Aspen men charging out at the top, looking stronger and stronger. They've already passed the team from France and the team from Argentina. Team from France coming on, getting on to their skis. As we've mentioned, the only co-ed team in the competition. And the team from Argentina. I caught up with the Aspen man going up the lift. A little tough, isn't it, when the, uh, just when that light starts to change? Transition from uh, daytime to nighttime, the light gets real flat. You can't see the shadows at all. Uh, it makes things tough when there's compressions and uh, and you can't see the terrain very well. Have you uh, have you been drafting each other? You, one takes the lead and then you switch, or how you been going down? Um, we've actually we've been doing we've been trading off. One will go in first the whole way. If someone feels they can pass, then we slingshot, and the other person stays behind. And we've kind of been just doing whatever feels fastest. Yep, I'm learning stuff every <laughs> run. What's the key thing? 
I think the key thing is to pace yourself, definitely. The, uh, the legs definitely get tired towards the bottom, and uh, it's going to be 24 hours soon. You're going to have to pace yourself. Having a partner who goes first and drafting off him is really important. Meanwhile, U.S. team member David Epperson on the snow before pump house. Being taken off by the ski patrolman. Katie Harvey talked to his teammate, Jeff Hamilton. Yeah, we were having a tough time. My partner was getting a little tired early, and uh, he came down over a couple rolls, and uh, he caught an edge and went out the front door, and he is he hurt his knee pretty bad. He's going to the hospital. So we are out of the race. And you're, you're choosing not to go on by yourself just for the experience? I'm, you know, maybe I will. I haven't thought about it right now. I'm worried about my partner. I might join the French later on and you know, ski a little bit, but right now I'm worried about my partner more than anything else. New rule this year, when one racer drops out, the entire team is also out of the competition. The Aspen men have moved into second place, the Canadians first, but they're only in the lead by 12 seconds. Another day begins in Europe. And as it does, American Airlines will touch down in 11 European cities, in nine different countries. So whether it's business, or pleasure that brings you to Europe. Fly the airline that can have you there as early as tomorrow morning. American Airlines, something special to Europe. Do you know which types of mutual funds are performing best right now? Get the answers when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Call now and you'll also get a free guide to understanding money and investing. It focuses on the risks and the rewards of investments. Get your guide free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Get 10 weeks of the journal for just $36 and the guide free with your paid subscription. Call toll-free 800-293-8400. That's 800-293-8400. NCAA basketball on ESPN. Every game counts. Welcome back to the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen in Aspen, Colorado. It's 8 p.m. 26 laps have been completed. The Canadians have the lead, but only by one second over the Aspen men. The pressure seems to be getting to the Canadian team. As the Austrians come flying through the finish, they're only 13 seconds behind. Having trouble getting onto the lift. Usually this is the best thing that they do is getting onto that gondola and they're not happy about it. The Aspen women have moved up into fifth place and are looking stronger. They're one minute, 31 seconds ahead of the other women's team here, the U.S. women. And here are the U.S. women at the bottom getting onto the lift. Katie Harvey talked to Noel Lyons on the way up the lift. And you know, no matter what happens, we already decided, gotta have fun. We're yeah. getting fledges. I just want to make it. <laughs> oh, yes, that's what we're going for. We're going to make it the whole 24 yeah. hours. Her teammate, Pam Fletcher, hasn't raced that much the last few years, but appreciated the help of the locals and the chance to be back in competition. Boy, thank you, Aspen Mountain, for the volunteer support and, and giving us, you know, they're down there supplying us. What do you need? You need a bucket? You need food? You need water? You need tea? You got everything? Blankets, hot packs. I mean, you know, it's no day at the beach, but I mean, we feel like we're being treated pretty nicely for considering all the stuff that we're doing. So since it's your first year, I know Noelle's done it three years now, or third year. So what do you think about it? I think it's, I think for me, it's totally cool. It's like I was a downhiller on the U.S. ski team, you know, and did that for so long and been away from it for so long. And to jump back in there, that training run the other night, I looked at Noelle at the bottom, I said, ooh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> 
you can bet that this U.S. women's team will give it everything they have to hang in there for 24 hours. Waxing and preparation of skis is particularly important in this competition. Each team has their own crew at the top of the mountain. We've hit the big time here. We're waxing every run. Every run. Every run. And we've got, I think each of the girls has, uh, this is the U.S. women's bench, and each of the girls has four pairs of Solomon skis. And so we can, we've got time to work on each pair, uh, let them cool before they go back out on the snow. The Canadians won last year, and their wax crew knows exactly what it takes to put on a winning performance. We started with about uh, eight, ten pairs of skis with Chris Ken, and we've narrowed it down to two now. What we're trying to do is find a, uh, the skis that run the best with Felix's skis, because Felix's skis initially were faster. The Argentinian team is here for the first time, and they didn't realize the importance of having several pairs of skis, and they had some problems. Well, ski came apart, delaminated, and what we're trying to do is to put it together with some really quick set epoxy and clamp it up so we can keep going with it. So we don't have to go out and get another pair of skis to substitute for them. It's a long 24 hours for the racers, but also for their technicians. They're up for 24 hours also, and they're important. Just as they did last year, the Canadian skis keep running well. They also understand the benefits of being here. Once you get into it, um, it really is just an exercise in coping, and uh, you just have to uh, set yourself, put yourself in a mindset uh, of just getting into the, being in a rhythm and doing pretty much the same stuff every run, being relaxed and not overreacting to anything. And uh, that's what we try to do, especially when we're in the gondola. They call Chris Kent the king of the all-nighters, the man who needs no sleep, and his teammate, Felix Belchek, had some ideas on how you should race in this competition. The, the skill in this event is being able to do it run after run after run. And, and after 24 hours, there's a lot of factors that come into play, such as how you know mentally um, solid you are and, uh, and the capability of being able to rest and re-energize yourself for every run. So there's, um, you know, it, it's much different from World Cup downhill, but it is a serious event all the same. Canadians still in the lead, but the Aspen men's team right behind and closing in fast. And while the competitors go up the lift to race down again, others went up the gondola for a little party. I can't believe that we're in here partying and they're out there skiing. I feel a little bit guilty right now, but we're in here cheering for them. I think they're doing a great job and I'm gonna probably stay up most of the night rooting them on. They're my heroes. I can't do anything for 24 hours, much less race. You know, it's, it's incredible. Fun at the Sun Deck. It's called the Hard Rock on Top, sponsored by the Hard Rock Cafe. I can't get over it. I'm just like in a state of awe. I mean, for them to do that and for the cause, it's wonderful. While the party continues, the contrast for the races couldn't be any greater. The 24 Hours of Aspen will be right back. Every day is a new beginning and another chance to feel healthy. It's already known for surviving virtually every form of driving torture known to man, except one. Are we there yet? He's touching me. I want to go home. Discovery. The family vehicle from Land Rover. I have to go again. Thrifty Car Rental Bull Week. It's the only solid week of bulls on television. The week kicks off with the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl when Virginia takes on TCU. Wednesday at 8, only on ESPN. 
We're with you through the night. Lynn Scott for KSBN Radio in Aspen, Colorado. The Land Rover 24 hours of Aspen continues. It's midnight. The weather is perfect. 20 degrees and the Canadian team is still in the lead. The French team has made a decision to pull out of the competition. Sophie Chalier's feet are absolutely freezing and she has to stop skiing. The Aspen men pushing off the top and talking it over for just a short while. Pretty soon though, they'll be going 60, 70 miles an hour. The ski catchers at the bottom, up all night. Certainly have not lost any of their enthusiasm. As the Swiss team comes through, Andre Kinchy had to pick up a replacement when his regular teammate was injured before the competition. It's my first year with a partner and uh, it's fun. I mean, he always is joking. At the top, I cannot believe him. When I'm going out there the first uh, 100 meters, he is just uh, singing behind me. And once here in Kleenex Corner, he was laughing and singing behind me and I was so tired and because he had a, a hot bag still in, he, in his uh, number in there and he lost it in Kleenex Corner and we have a lot of fun and uh, that's what you need. <laughs> how's, the, how's the course for you? Oh, the course is, is no problem for me but now after the halfway I have to be concentrated about the course because uh, Yes, I haven't any training, and so I must be careful. The Austrians seem to be having some trouble. They're now running in third place. Alexander Naglic on the lift. We had little troubles with the skis. They weren't as fast as we expected them to be, and very different, like my skis and his skis, so hard to catch up with, with each other. But now it's fine, everything's set, and we're just trying to keep up. Coming into the bottom, it's the Brits with Malcolm Erskine and Bill Gaylord. They certainly have the right attitude after 12 hours of skiing. And the crowd loves it. What do you, what do you think of these guys skiing all night like this? I, I think it's great. I like to watch them start. And I like to check them on in the night. And the next morning, I like to watch and see if they're still up. It's amazing. It's amazing that they're still, they're still going after all these hours, and they're going to do 24 hours. Is there something you'd like to try? Uh, no. <laughs> it inspires me to, to want to do part of it. I don't know if I could actually handle it, but it's great watching them. <laughs> what do you think? A little crazy? Yeah, I think it's a little crazy. <laughs> going 24 hours like that, it's, uh, it's amazing they can keep it together mentally and physically. And the Aspen women's team, McBride and Sutro. They have trained for many, many weeks getting ready for this competition, and it looks like it's paid off. And as we see all of the volunteers, 400 volunteers working on this competition, this event has become a real happening in Aspen, Colorado. The Aspen men, Tyler Williams and Nate Bryan, only eight seconds behind the Canadians and catching up fast. As the race continues, we've been to a party on the top of the mountain, and although the town looks pretty quiet from here, don't be fooled. It's fun in the old mining town as usual. At least they're giving some thought to those racers on the mountain competing in the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. You gotta be tired. I mean, you gotta be beat up. Coming down the mountain, it went 80, 80 plus, 90 miles an hour, middle of the night freezing. You just can't wait to get back into the gondola and warm up. <laughs> I think it takes a lot of guts and a lot of endurance. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about what it takes to, to, uh, to do that sort of thing, and it's really not about uh, the skiing part of it. It's all the little rodents, varmints, squirrels, and things that are on the trail <laughs> late at night. So that's the hard part, You're missing the squirrels and the varmints. Uh, people out there skiing 24-hour Aspen, serious endurance. Got to hand it to them. I'll try it someday. <laughs> I think it's great. I think it takes a lot of determination. They've got it where they need it. They're out there doing it for 24 hours. It's wonderful. And we're having fun.
at 2 a.m. And after 45 runs down Aspen Mountain, the Aspen men have taken the lead over the Canadians. They lead by five seconds. In fifth place overall, the Aspen women. And they lead the U.S. women who are in seventh by two minutes and 21 seconds. Are you a sports fan? Do you know one? Because now you can get five different awesome sports videos for just $19.95. That's right, all five videos for only $19.95. And this is first rate stuff. You'll see today's hottest stars like Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley. Plus, get classic footage like Willie Mays and Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game. And this video here is wall to wall incredible plays. It's got some of the most awesome action you've ever seen. You'll laugh and you'll cringe when you watch the greatest sports bloopers ever committed. Also see some of the most hilarious pranks and practical jokes in sports. These five different videos include hours of exclusive footage, much of it never before seen on TV. You can't go wrong because you get a 30 day money back guarantee. So call now and get these five great sports videos for only $19.95. Call now, 1-800-210-7373. That's 1-800-210-7373. You get all five videos for only $19.95. Call 1-800-210-7373. That's 1-800-210-7373. Hey, Follies fans, pull up a chair and sit down. Because you don't want to miss Sports Illustrated's fabulous Follies Fun Pack. Featuring two amazing new videos, Basketball's NBA Rewind, plus the NFL's 100 Greatest Follies, both free with your paid subscription to SI. In NBA Rewind, Ahmad is always near. Larkin here. NBA stars will do this and also that. In the NFL's 100 Greatest Follies, you get the funniest of all time. So hang on to your shirt because this could hurt. <laughs> Call now and Jolly Ball is what you'll see. It comes in your fun pack free. Get 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. Use your credit card. SI in your free fun pack. Make great gifts. Shake a leg. Call now and get both fun pack videos free from SI. There is nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. 3 a.m. at the Land Rover, 24 hours of Aspen. It's been back and forth between the Canadians and the Aspen men. The Aspen men now have the lead. Canada and us, we're pretty much battling it out. We've, uh, they're way ahead of us. We caught right up and took the lead, and they took it right back and put a little gap, and we, we took it back, and now I think we're in front, and we're opening up a good size lead and we just keep on skiing strong we'll, we'll be in there the mental part it, it's it's amazing it comes and goes with each gondola ride sometimes you'll just be dead and sometimes you feel fine but sometimes you really feel dead this is pretty much the worst time both of them are working together I mean you're mentally drained You've been physically drained for a while and uh, you just keep having to work through it the Aspen women continue to look strong. Between now and sunrise is the toughest time for the racers. Most people are asleep. Yeah, the hardest time of the race, I think it's between midnight and the morning hours. So, because you're very tired, you, you are, you're sleeping in the gondola, and yeah, you're down. It's a mental game. It's really a mental sport. I think that the, everybody coming into this event has, uh, they're laced with um, histories of US team titles and national titles, downhill titles. And I think the race is not just, are you an accomplished skier, but are you uh, physically strong? Are you, do you have strong endurance? And are you mentally tough? And can you concentrate through fatigue? I must be uh, strong in my head to make it. It's a it's a painful time to be up there. It's that's when your mental strength is at its at its weakest. That's where you know you're looking for an excuse to quit. You know you just you think my God how could I possibly last through this and you're trying to sleep on the lift and your body's your body is hungry for that deep sleep and it's not getting it. You can't get it when you're on the lift. It's 
it's more of a mental game. And, and I think once, uh, you know, once you've been into the race and, and you're starting to feel yourself get tired, that's when it's critical that you have a, you know, a strong mental framework. And then every single time I go into spa, it's just like the first time. My heart's in my throat, and I just say, keep it together, head down, and go for it. And I, I yell at myself the whole time. I go, just keep going, keep going. And I say, just have to make it to the flats in Kleenex Corner. I, I'm thinking all the time when I go through there, uh, don't crash, don't crash. I mean, your, your legs are tired, especially toward the end of the race, and, and you hit these compressions, and you feel like you're just going to compress right into them. I hate falling so much. Just clench your teeth, grit your knees, and don't fall over. That's my strategy. Um, that's a matter of sticking with your routine. Because you just you, you establish a routine, and you just stick with it through the whole time. And if, as long as you stick with it, you're going to get through it, you know, and you have to believe that the, there's light at the end of the tunnel because it's, it's hard to see it at that, at that time. After 18 straight hours of racing, only two teams have dropped out. Nine teams remain. This is an experience they'll never forget. Racing through the night. Tired of being snowed in? Plowed under? Is your technique going all downhill? Stop! Let AJ Kit, Peekaboo Street, and Holly Flanders teach you to ski like a champion for less than the cost of a ski mask. Take a lesson from the pros with ESPN's Let's Go Skiing. Only $14.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-717-ESPN. Please specify beginner or advanced. Do you know which types of mutual funds are performing best right now? Get the answers when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Call now and you'll also get a free guide to understanding money and investing. It focuses on the risks and the rewards of investments. Get your guide free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Get 10 weeks of the journal for just $36 and the guide free with your paid subscription. Call toll-free 800-572-2600. That's 800-572-2600. In the end, it all comes down to one great play. That single decisive moment when the incredible becomes reality. Now it's time to choose the best of the greatest. The ESPY Award, given in recognition of exceptional performance. Tune into SportsCenter or hook up with ESPN Net on Prodigy to cast your vote for the outstanding plays and performances of 1994. The ESPY Awards, presented by General Motors. This time, you make the call. I'm standing on top of the mountain at 7 o'clock in the morning. This is when the light is particularly bad, before the sun comes up. But there's another problem. This fog here, particularly on the top part, makes it very difficult to see. And the last few hours of this race are going to be exciting. Team from the USA, Aspen, in the lead. Last year's winner of the Canadian team sitting in second place knows that if they're going to have any chance, they're going to have to really push hard to overtake the Aspen men. But the Aspen men have stretched their lead, and it is now 19 seconds. The fog is only on the top part of the course, a good break for the ski racers. In third place, the Austrians at the bottom, slipping 72 seconds behind. And they ski right straight into the lift. In fourth place, the Swiss team. It is possible from what we hear that Andre Kinchy is in the first stages of hypothermia. He is really cold. In fifth place and racing well, the Aspen women, McBride and Sutro. They've just passed the men from Great Britain. They're also ahead of Argentina and Germany. And the U.S. women arrive at the finish. Noelle Lyons and Pam Fletcher. In seventh place, the team from Great Britain. And the team from Argentina in eighth. They've moved ahead of the Germans. Michael Feit of the German team at 37 is the oldest competitor. His teammate Schiller has been holding him back. 
Priscilla claims to have gone 138 miles per hour on roller skates behind a car on a German highway. But this is ski racing. Meanwhile, the second place Canadian team is hurting. Yeah, well, we've started our push now. Like, I've, I mean, I was just miserable during the night, and I really, my back started to hurt and everything. It was all that I could do just to continue. And, but now, sun's up, and I'm feeling a little better. And uh, the last few runs, I've been able to tuck it a little bit lower and, and so on. But our times really aren't, be, aren't that great. Um, you know, we may, be, we may be picking up a second here and there, but uh, we're at the point now where we need to pick up uh, a couple of seconds consistently right to the finish. You know, it's been a, a real different game this year. And in the past, um, or last year anyways, we had a pretty good cushion. And when you hit that, you know, the, those early morning hours, you, we had something to rest on. And, and this year, it hasn't been the case because we've been pushed the whole time or had to, you know, fight to to sort of keep our position. And, and it's it's been a real battle. So it's, it's been a lot tougher, way tougher this year. And as the Canadians come out of the gondola on top of the mountain, the sun has come up, even though they're tired. This should at least boost their spirits. One of the charities of the 24 Hours of Aspen is the Sunshine Kids, those who have cancer. And we're very pleased to have Renata Bradford, who is up here. Renata, you live in Boulder. Have you had a chance to enjoy this event? Oh yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been great watching the racers and there's been a lot of, you know, events and dances and parties. It's been a lot of fun. Tell us about the uh, about the Sunshine Kids program. I think it's wonderful. Oh, well, the Sunshine Kids take kids who have cancer from all over the country on great trips just so that they can forget that they have cancer and have a great time and remember that they're kids instead well, of just cancer patients. Did you get to do any skiing? Yeah, I got to ski for a couple days actually. How was your skiing? It was wonderful. It, great powder, there was fresh snow, and just one fall. So it's a great skiing trip. Well, we're really glad to have you yeah. here. And uh, this is a very worthwhile charity. I'm glad the people of Aspen are doing it. Well, thank you very much. Um, we are very grateful to all the, the sponsors and all the skiers and everybody for doing this for us. It's going to help a lot of kids. And many of us here in Aspen are pleased to be able to lend our support. The racers are making their final push. We'll be right back. Dinner is served. They had a Ming vase. They had a Rembrandt. Even Louis XVI's favorite chair. But of all their prized possessions, there's only one they haven't had to replace. The Range Rover. The world's most capable luxury vehicle. Hey, Follies fans, pull up a chair and sit down. Because you don't want to miss Sports Illustrated's fabulous Follies Fun Pack. Featuring two amazing new videos. Basketball's NBA Rewind. Plus the NFL's 100 Greatest Follies. Both free with your paid subscription to SI. In NBA Rewind, Ahmad is always near. Larkin here. NBA stars will do this and also that. In the NFL's 100 Greatest Follies, you get the funniest of all time. So hang on to your shirt because this could hurt. Call now and Jolly Ball is what you'll see. It comes in your fun pack free. Get 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. Use your credit card. SI and your free fun pack make great gifts. Shake a leg. Call now and get both fun pack videos free from SI. There is nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Hey, Tom, what does this watch stand for anyway? It stands for Sunday Night Football on ESPN. Oh, oh, it's watch. Because I thought, see, I, I thought the W, if you switch around a couple of letters, and it just, it's, it works right up. Join the watch program. We encourage everyone to watch. I was, had it crooked, I think. It's 9.30 in the morning in Aspen, Colorado. Welcome back to the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. 
The ski racers have now had 69 downhill runs down Aspen Mountain. The Canadian team in second place. And here we say Felix Bilcek give Chris Kent just a little push right there. The Canadians are 22 seconds behind the Aspen men, so they need a little push. And here are the Aspen men on Kleenex Corner, getting a little rough. The Austrians at the bottom, one minute, 40 seconds behind, and Rindel had some thoughts about Kleenex Corner. Yeah, Kleenex is terrible now. <laughs> the, the course is very good. It's not so fast in the year before, but the course is very good. But Kleenex is terrible, because if you want to curve it, you have some big problems. The Austrians certainly know about big problems at downhill. They come from the toughest downhill of all in Kitzbühel, Austria. ESPN will be covering that event in January. Tell us what you think about these guys skiing all night long. I think it's very brave and wonderful. What did you think when you woke up this morning and realized, oh my, they're still out there racing? I was um, feeling sorry for them. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm pretty amazed. It's uh, pretty incredible to see what they're doing out there. And every time they come through, I just think how tired they must be. And um, how do you train for something like that? You know, how do you uh, work for the exhaustion and, and keep your endurance going? It's, it's pretty incredible. I admire every single one of them. It's a good cause, and I think that's probably why they're out there doing it, because every time they, they get off that gondola, they probably realize that it's, it's a good cause that they're doing this for, and, and it's uh, raising money for a lot of great uh, kids out there. Tell me, uh, what do you think about this 24 hours of Aspen? It's cool. <laughs> and the Aspen women have really been dominating the U.S. women. They have that lead by two minutes and 21 seconds. McBride and Sucho for the Aspen women and Fletcher and Lyons for the U.S. women. Pam Fletcher was a longtime member of the U.S. ski team and she had some thoughts about how they had raced in this competition. Noelle and I have a lot of respect for those that win because we're doing it too and we know what it takes to keep it going and you know ski racing in every sport has a little bit of luck you know luck favors the brave and we were brave and luck just didn't come with us but you know we 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 did have some brilliant moments through this 24 hours and we kept it exciting let me tell you yeah we did <laughs> And the Swiss team still having lots of fun. <laughs> Even screaming in the air as they go off the bump. 11 teams here for this event, and many times skiers just don't realize how easy it can be to get to U.S. Resort. As an example, Aspen has two airports servicing it. The newest one is the Eagle County Airport, only 60 miles away which is serviced by one of this program's sponsors, American Airlines. Bring in jet service flights from all over the country. One enthusiastic observer here today is Bill Baker, Vice President, Corporate Communications with Land Rover. Yeah, but we love the spirit of the volunteers and the, the guts and uh, individualism of this race. Well, you know, I have to ask you the one question. Did you stay up all night? I, absolutely not. <laughs> I can't think if I stay up all night. No, I, turn, I even skipped the party at the top this year because uh, I have to try to keep track of, uh, I'm on the jury trying to keep track of how the results are coming up, so I try to keep my brain straight. Well, it's glad to have both you and Land Rover back here again. For the sixth year, it's a terrific event, and we're very pleased to be representing uh, such a terrific opportunity for the Sunshine Kids and the kids of the, of the Roaring Fork Valley here to uh, benefit from this race. And we're certainly pleased that they will benefit, too. With the Canadian team here, on the previous run, they had some problems. Chris Kent slipped out on Kleenex Corner and lost about 30 seconds. This now puts them just about 50 seconds behind the Aspen men. And as the Aspen men keep coming down, it would take a huge mistake for them to lose. With the town of Aspen in the background, stay with us. We'll be back for the final runs. Do you know which types of mutual funds are performing best right now? Get the answers when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Call now and you'll also get a free guide to understanding money and investing. It focuses on the risks and the rewards of investments. Get your guide free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Get 10 weeks of the journal for just $36 and the guide free with your paid subscription. 
Call toll-free 800-572-2600. That's 800-572-2600. The Land Rover Discovery is designed to handle virtually anything, including a family. Discovery, a family vehicle from Land Rover. It's a great place to have children. As the Austrians push off from the top, it's 11.45 a.m. 77 runs have been completed, and the Austrians are trying to push hard to see if they can get in one more run. They're in third place at the moment. At the bottom, the Aspen men. This will be their last ride. They've also taken 77 runs. And the Canadians at the top seem very casual. Well, they should be. They're in second place, 44 seconds behind the Aspen men's team, and they know it would take a miracle in order for them to win as they wave to some of the crowd. And the Aspen women, who have had a tremendous competition, just over eight minutes behind the winning Aspen men's team. And the Aspen men taking off from the top on their final run. Unless they have a fall, they've won this competition. And the Austrian men sliding down towards the finish line. The Canadians finishing in second place. I can't hardly even believe it. <laughs> And finally, after 24 hours, the Aspen men come down the winners. Congratulations. Guys, great going. Uh, what, a, what an effort. Yeah, it was quite an effort. <laughs> What'd you think? Uh, 24 hours, long time to ski. Very long, almost too long. <laughs> what, were you a little bit worried about the Canadians? Definitely. Very worried. I mean, uh, that competition between uh, the two teams got closer and closer and closer near the end there. We did. We were battling it out for a long time, and uh, we held on to it. What do you think did it? I think uh, our crew did it. People who did the skis, wherever they are, they deserve a... <laughs> They're celebrating. They're celebrating. All right. Guys, congratulations. It was, it was a great effort. Thank you very much. <laughs> Guys, it was a great competition. Uh, you made it pretty close. Well, you know, uh, the big difference from last year to this year is that this year we had to fight every inch of the way. You know, last year we had a bit of a uh, bit of a cushion in the you know in the wee hours of the morning that we could kind of relax a little bit, and and to and this race it wasn't like that at all. We had to fight every inch of the way, and uh, and it was a good battle right to the end. You and the U.S. team, uh, did you know how close you were all the time? Pretty much most of the time, and uh, I mean there were a few times we weren't quite sure, but uh, going into it we didn't really think they were going to be. Uh, but when we saw them skiing, uh, it wasn't a surprise. They were really good. They started a little bit slowly, but then they seemed to come on strong at the end. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, they're a couple of young guys. They're talented skiers, and, uh, and you know, they did it the right way. So all, the, all, all my hat's off to them. Well, you know, you guys are a couple of young guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we wish, Bob. We wish. <laughs> it's great to see you. Thanks a lot, Bob. You two have a lot to be proud of, but are you a little tired? Absolutely, Bob. We're a little tired. No, actually, I think we're both still feeling strong. We were looking for an extra, forward to an extra run, but we didn't quite make it. Well, I was really impressed. You, you really skied very strong. Well, thank you. We worked hard. Uh, we have trained for the last uh, two months at the Aspen Club here in, in Aspen with Bill Fabrizino, and he has just worked us hard, much harder than 24 hours. So we still feel that we have some left in our legs. Want to take another couple runs? <laughs> Will you join us? <laughs> I'm tired just watching you. Great going. Thank you, Bob.
That's it for the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. Kitty, that was really something, wasn't it? It was amazing, and the Americans made a fantastic showing in both the men and the women. Boy, listening to them talk there at the finish sounded like they didn't have much left in them. No, it certainly <laughs> didn't, but I can imagine after 24 hours of grueling skiing that I wouldn't have much left in me either. And how about the U.S. women? They skied very well, too. Oh, fantastic. Right behind the Aspen women, and, and it's a strong showing again for women. It's their third year in the competition. Well, it's been a great competition. We're glad to have been here once again. Goodbye, everybody. The Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen has been brought to you by Land Rover, the maker of legendary British off-road vehicles. <laughs> Downhill ski racing is the ultimate test of nerve, courage, and ability. But this isn't a typical downhill ski race. This one involves teams. Today, men and women race for their country. Two-person teams reaching speeds of 90 miles per hour and separated from each other by only a few feet. And it's not just one run down Aspen Mountain. It'll be close to 80. They'll brush aside fatigue and compete through the night. There is no event like it in the world of ski racing. This is the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. Leading things off, it's Tyler Williams on the left and Nate Bryan on the right. Last year's winners, so they know exactly what it's going to take and how they're going to feel after 24 hours of ski racing. The Canadian team on the left, Chris Kent, at 34 years of age, the veteran of this competition. He was on the winning team in 1993, and he has a newcomer as a partner. Ian Sullivan, who was an investment banker when he's not skiing, only found out about this two weeks ago. The Austrian team, Christopher Reindel. He'll be competing with his partner, Axel Naglisch. They're from Kitzbühel, Austria, and they were third last winter. Many people feel that they're going to be the team to beat this year. Representing Switzerland from Davos is Andre Kinchy on the left and Roger Sieber on the right. Both the youngest racers here at 23. Skating right out of the start, Kinchy puts his pole right between his feet and goes down. Not exactly how you want to start off when you're going to be competing for 24 hours, something I'm sure they're going to talk over when they get on the lift at the bottom. The skis that they're using are longer than the normal recreational skis, not that easy to skate with. Lots of fans for this team, the Aspen women with Gelo Sutro on the left and Katie McBride on the right. They were the overall winner of the women's competition last year and actually beat a lot of the men's teams. They've been training for months and want to prove themselves once again and even move up the ladder and beat a few more of the men. The very colorful team from Great Britain, Martin Bell, 16 years on the World Cup circuit and his partner, Malcolm Erskine. One. Roommates together for three years, so at least they know each other. They are here to have a good time, and you know, they ski well too. The U.S. women, hard to tell them apart, it's the Harvey twins. Five. Katie on the left, three. she's married to an Argentinian recently, and Megan, who is going to Columbia Business School, on the right. And there'll be a lot of people here in Aspen cheering for them. They grew up here. A lot of people skiing in Aspen from South America these days. And we have a team representing Argentina. It's Barrios on the left and Davalos on the right. On the race course, it's the Harvey twins. Gives you a pretty good idea of how close they are together as they go down the mountain, drafting each other. And at the start, getting ready, the team from Germany, Michael Feit, the Five, oldest competitor four, in the competition at three, 38, two, and his partner, Never raced here before. Martin Fiala. Fiala told me yes, he didn't know exactly what to expect. He just got off the German team after seven years on the World Cup circuit. The last team, the team representing the United States, Jim Morgan on the left, Jeff Hamilton on the right. Hamilton is the world speed skiing champion. He holds the record 150 miles per hour, and that is fast. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Biatti, and the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen 
is underway. Can you imagine skiing up and down Aspen Mountain for 24 hours, about 80 laps? Now, you know, I'm going to stay up all night, and I can't even imagine doing that, much less skiing. I'm not even going to be skiing. Working with me, Jennifer Gardner. Now, Jennifer, there are two women's teams competing here today. One of whom is the Harvey Twins. They grew up here, and, you know, they look pretty good. They're going to be representing the United States. They do. They look very strong. Now, Megan has raced. Um, actually, Megan, this is her very first race. Katie has raced twice before. They are identical twins, and it should be a lot of fun to watch them throughout the race. They're such identical twins. I can't even tell them apart. They fool me all the time. I know. Me too. Uh, how about representing Aspen? They finished fifth last year. Very strong team. Katie McBride and Gela Sutro. Yeah. They are, they've been training for the last six months. They look very good. And I understand in talking to them that they want to beat more of the men this year. So they have something to prove. They're going for it. <laughs> Number one. All of these competitors have something to prove. First of all, just to make it for 24 hours, but also to be right up there in the standing. Should be quite an event. After a fall out of the start, the Swiss have reached the finish and ready to take the gondola back up to the start. The Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen is being brought to you by Land Rover, the maker of legendary British off-road vehicles. I'm on the wheel, I'm on the wheel, I'm on the wheel. Land Rover Discoveries frequently come home slightly more soiled than ordinary cars, but they still get washed exactly the same way. With soap, and water. There once was a man and a bean. In the shadow, a mule could be seen. They walked in the plain, soon found acres of land that were ripe, fertile, and green. It didn't take long for that bean to grow strong and become 100% Colombian coffee. What, mon ami? You are expecting a rhyme, maybe? If your cold medicine is harder on you than your cold, try Advil Cold and Sinus. It relieves nasal congestion, sinus pain, fever, but won't make you drowsy. Knocks out your symptoms, not you. Advil Golden Sinus, advanced formula for colds. Catch some air to Aspen Snowmass. This winter, four different airlines are flying to Aspen from four major cities. Los Angeles, Dallas, Minneapolis, and Denver. Fly nonstop into the heart of Aspen. The airport is just two miles from downtown. This winter, you'll find lower fares and great skiing. Isn't it time you skied Aspen? For reservations and information, call 1-800-26-ASPEN. On February 12th, we'll present the ESPYs Live. And every night on SportsCenter, we'll show the greatest plays and performances of the year. Call your ESPY vote in on SportsCenter or vote on ESPNNet. The ESPYs, presented by General Motors, only on ESPN. Welcome back to Aspen, Colorado, as we look at Aspen Mountain. Land Rover 24 hours of Aspen from the top to the bottom. 3,200 vertical feet in 2.6 miles. And the team who will be the winner will be that team who has taken the most laps in the shortest amount of time on the snow. The Canadian team at the start, but they have a lot of problems today because Chris Kent has had the flu and has been in bed. He's been taking antibiotics, but he wanted to take a shot at it. The Aspen men, Brian and Williams, started slowly last year and then picked up as the race went on. The Austrian men from the resort of Kitzbühel going through Phoenix Corner. The Swiss men right behind each other. Now keep in mind, they're going over 80 miles an hour. You can't get much closer than that. The Germans at the finish. One of the big keys to this competition is getting right on that gondola as fast as you can. They even have catchers to help them and to get them out of those skis as fast as possible. Following right behind, the Aspen women. They're in outstanding physical condition, as we have mentioned, and they're going to be tough in this competition today. The U.S. team, the Harvey twins, with Megan looking behind to find out where her sister is. Don't worry, she's right there. The U.S. men, Hamilton in the lead. He may be used to going 150 miles an hour, but maybe not the bumps of Little Nell, and goes down a terrible fall as his teammate Jim Morgan, who trained for this event for five months, slides into the finish area. And in the sport of ski racing, 
it can happen very fast. 24 hours Jim Morgan obviously very concerned. Good friends from Lake Tahoe in California compete together on the speed skiing circuit. Boy, look at that ski. It really, it really got shattered. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. My back hurts pretty bad. But I think I'm, I'm not, not broken, obviously. Jeff. Yeah, Bob. Quite a fall. <laughs> that was quite a fall. I've been having a couple uh, burly runs on that bump right there. It's a kicker right there, and there's one right after another. So when you hit that first one, I throws in the back seat, and I just couldn't quite hold it together for that second one. I'm having a tough time on that jump the whole day. The course is in great shape. I just haven't been able to keep my hands forward on that lower, lower bump. What's this mean? Is it over? I'm not sure. My back is pretty beat up right now. It's sore, and it's definitely not. And I'm going to sit for a half hour, see how I feel. Last year, as you know, I was out in five hours with my partner falling, and I hate to go out in three or four, three or four runs this time. So I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to continue. I'm just going to see how it feels right now. What do you think? Uh, could you tell when you, that your partner was down? Well, I was uh, maybe a second behind him, and I was just clearing the knoll. Had a real comfortable landing, and uh, I saw him get back on the knoll there a little. And he was in the back seat by the time he hit the second knoll, and it just turned him on his ear, and I was uh, jumping over my partner at about 75 miles an hour down here on the bottom. I just hope he's okay. I, I don't care if we run again or not. I just want to make sure my teammates are right. That's the important thing here. Upon further examination at the hospital, it was determined that Jeff Hamilton suffered a compressed vertebrae of the lower back, obviously out of the competition. Farther up on the race course, the pump house rolls and the team from Great Britain. The Asper women on Kleenex. Sucho, a fall there earlier. Tell me about the crash after Kleenex. Well, it was kind of a surprise. I don't really know what happened. I think I either went too straight in, or I didn't really anticipate the fence being where it was because I was number two going in. Uh, and I just hit the fence, and one ski came off. And it was a surprise. No injuries? No, no. No, I was more mad than anything else. <laughs> Well, you never want to have your ski come off, and U.S. women went right through Kleenex with no problems at all as they come down towards the finish. And as the Canadians enter Spire Gulch, problems for them too. Chris Kent with the flu, Ian Sullivan only having been on skis for two weeks. But back in 1993, it was a very healthy Chris Kent who teamed with former Canadian Olympian Felix Belchuk to win the event. It was an outstanding combination of two racers who had been on the Canadian team on the World Cup circuit for so many years. And on the victory podium, Kent tired, but in good shape. Actually, I probably have less confidence in myself personally this year just because I have been uh, very sick all week and uh, I have no idea how I'm going to last. I've just been uh, resting as much as possible and uh, I came into the event this year in really quite good shape. I did the, probably the best training I've done in the last 10 years this fall, but um, it's hard to say how much I've been weakened by this sickness. Sometimes you can't tell because Kent always seems to rise to the occasion. But wearing a back brace and with the flu, his work is cut out for him. After five laps in the Land Rover, 24 hours of Aspen, Austria in the lead, followed by Germany, Switzerland is third, Canada is fifth. Stay with us. We'll be right back. At Aramark, we know great things happen when people work together. When you're part of something bigger. When you take pride in how you look. When you know you're a team. At Aramark, we know great things happen when you put on a uniform. Aramark Uniform Services, America's largest uniform company. Every day, America Online is making it a little easier for people to live, work, and play. With point-and-click access to instant news and sports, financial updates, online magazines, shopping and travel, and easy access to the Internet. Call now for America Online, a new way to use your computer to communicate and have fun. 
Call 1-800-219-8200 for your free America Online Startup Kit with free software and 10 free online hours. It's everything you need to get online. Call now. It's cool to have the athletes hanging out here, but as of late, Mary Lou Retton has become a bit of a problem. Larry, I've been watching your smile. It's not working. What are you talking about? It's fake. I mean, I know a smile. I mean, watch me. Show me your smile. Let me see what you're doing. It's fake. It's not it. When you smile, it comes here out of your mouth, but it's a body thing. Just like this. Smile. Here, let me help. Smile. 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 Are you currently using any tooth polish? So what do you think, from Davos? I'm from Davos, yes. Uh -huh. I'm leaving, I moved over here 10 years ago. And the uh, Swiss team is from Davos. From Davos, yeah. These are, I know Andre Kinchi when he, I was a babysitter from him <laughs> in Davos. <laughs> yeah, he was just this size. He's doing pretty well. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> no. His father was good too. He was a ski teacher here in Aspen 20, um, almost 30 years ago. What do you think about this event? I like it. Oh, yeah. You think they'd ever do anything like this in Davos, or this would be too crazy for the Swiss, no, right? It's, I think it's a little bit too crazy for Switzerland, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's typical American, <laughs> but I like it. It sure is typical American. As a matter of fact, Andre Kinchi's brother was born right here in Aspen, Colorado. Last week, he and his partner, Sieber, went skiing in British Columbia. Powder skiing, said they had the greatest time of their lives. But with the Austrians skiing like they're skiing right now, they better start thinking about downhill ski racing, because these Austrians are going to be tough to catch up to. A lot of fans for the Aspen men, last year's winners. They started slow last year, and they did the same this year. Canadians may not be feeling all that great, but they keep right on going. Chris Kent holds the record 83 laps in 1993. And the light is getting flat on the mountain, and when you're going 80 to 85 miles an hour, it's hard to see all the little ripples and the bumps in there, so the pine boughs are being put down. And approaching Kleenex Corner, the Argentinians are being passed by the Germans. This can be pretty tricky. And as they come down at the finish, well, you can say Michael Fight at 38 years of age might be over the hill, but looks like he has a lot of spark left in him. Former silver medalist in the World Championships held in Garmisch, Germany, 1978. Talking to the Argentinians yesterday, they said that last year was the most exciting experience of their life. Oh, but that was pretty exciting being passed by the Germans, too. And coming down the Little Nell Shush, the Aspen women, Katie McBride and Gello Sutro. Sutro's a real estate agent in Aspen when she's not training for ski racing. She also won the Swedish Downhill Championship in 1983, but they have to be careful coming through these rolls because this is tricky, particularly when the light gets flat. Katie Harvey of the U.S. women's team alone at the finish. She saw her twin sister, Megan, fall on Kleenex Corner. Gonna be okay. Then Megan arrives. And the two go up the lift together. The sound of the Aspen men. Tyler Williams went into the Kleenex corner in the fence earlier in the competition. Um, we're, yeah, we're, we're just trying to be consistent and, you know, take it easy right now. We're not trying to, you know, go out too hard. I think um, the fall on the second run hurt, dropped us back a little bit, but I think we've picked up a few places since then. And winning last year, they started slowly and then picked up the pace. Meanwhile, first aid car coming down with Megan Harvey injured on her fall on Kleenex Corner in the last run. Her sister Katie brings us up to date. Uh, well, Megan and I were skiing into Kleenex and I was behind her and she went to make the turn and she caught an edge and went piling into the fence and I thought from what happened, what I saw, I had to keep going, that she'd be okay in about four, 
four and a half minutes later, she came down the mountain and uh, we hopped in the gondola and went back up, but she's strained her neck. And so uh, better to be safe than sorry, I suppose. So well, she's gone to get it looked at at the hospital. What, what did you talk about when you were back on the gondola? Well, she was jittery and nervous. So I said, you know, every, if you everything's fine, then I'll take the next four runs in front and let her stay behind. Because of course, when you're behind, you rest and you can relax a little more and the person in front does the work. And she said, yeah, all right, all right. And we had a medical person with us, a nurse, and she looked at the neck and Megan couldn't turn her head to the side. So decided it would be better to, to pull out. And so after that, I guess I was trying to convince her that it's okay. I mean, I finished this race twice before and I've got my records, but I feel more sorry for her and I hope she's okay. Better to take every precaution. Meanwhile, the leaders, the proud Austrians from Kitzbühel, ready to start down the mountain third last winter not very happy about that result want to make it better this is a pretty good example of what they went through last winter. Austrian ski racers are used to winning they enjoy coming to Aspen and having a good time partying but when they're on the race course they're all business at home in Kitzbühel though they get some pretty crazy skiing in. Good friends, and they love to ski. I mean, we've been skiing since we're little together, and we know each other for a long time, and we started a business together. We spent so much time together, and we just know each other, and I know what he needs, he needs what I need. I know when I shouldn't talk, he knows when he shouldn't talk, and we just know each other. And as it starts to get dark in Aspen, Colorado, the Austrians in first place, the Germans second, Great Britain a surprising third. Sleek, practical, beautiful. The contour concept found only on Frigidaire gallery refrigerators. Convenient features like a flip-up shelf and a new built-in water filter for better tasting ice and water. Practical, beautiful, Frigidaire. Call Frigidaire and discover the look of better performance. This is incredible. Incredible. What is it? The Double Supreme Cheeseburger. It's new. Brand new. Same kind of stuff as the Big Mac. Yeah, but I like this better. Oh, that's because Burger King flame broils them. It's got a lot more beef. A lot more beef. Gonna take all lunch hour to finish one. The Burger King Double Supreme Cheeseburger. Less bread and 75% more beef than the Big Mac. And it's flame broiled, never fried. With fries and a drink, just $2.99. Well, back to work. What's the rush? I don't think we're gonna be too busy. Maybe Burger King won't advertise it. Big Monday means conference rivals take it to the iron. At 7.30, Big East superstars will be in the Spectrum Spotlight when Allen Iverson and the Hoyas hook up with Kerry Kittles and Nova. Then at 9.30, the Cowboys head south to Norman to battle the Sooners in another tip-off in the Bedlam Series. Georgetown Villanova at 7.30. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma at 9.30. Big Monday presented by Bud Light tomorrow night on ESPN. I've been up since 5 o'clock, baby, 24 hours. The longest day of skiing right here at Aspen, Colorado, baby. Well, this event certainly does turn on the locals, and the lights have been turned on on Aspen Mountain. As we have said, 24 hours of skiing here through the night as we see the German team. Martin Fiola, just off the World Cup circuit, wasn't exactly sure if he was ready for this kind of competition. Well, he'll find out. But the Austrians know a lot about it. This is their fourth competition. And they are flying down Spar Gulch. And the U.S. men are flying down Deer Park, closer to the top of the mountain. And look at how close they are together. One little slip, and it could be serious injury. The Swiss are having a lot of fun in this competition, and they have a lot of fans here in Aspen, Colorado. Youngest team at 23, as we said earlier. Go, 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 go. 
30 years of age, Martin Bell from Great Britain isn't exactly the youngest, but he said he loves to come to Aspen to get out of the real world in London. How about the real world, though, You're trying to compete for 24 hours? I'm sure the team from Argentina is thinking about that, too. Argentina is not known as being a great ski racing country. And it looks like they're getting a little bit tired going around Kleenex. One team concerned right now, the Canadians. Sixth place, usually very near the top. We're not doing too very well in the speeds in the, in the times of, the, of our runs. The uh, other competitors seem to be really going after it. And, uh, and um, like I said, I, st I mean, I feel good on my skis. And I, I actually don't know, I'm not sure why my times are that slow. But uh, um, I'm not really too worried about that. Um, Chris and I are a little bit, uh, a little disappointed. We're uh, getting waxed by a couple other teams right now. and. Uh, we're trying our best to go as fast as we can, but uh, we're trying. Go, 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 go. One team really trying, the Aspen women. Having everybody cheer them on has to help. Katie McBride discusses the problems of racing for 24 hours. I think there are a couple different obstacles. One of them is the obvious fatigue, and that's both physical and mental. Um, and the other is the pure pain of it. Um, in my case, I have some injuries that I contend with, but um, just the lactic acid buildup in your legs is a, is a pain that you have to override. And we've had the good fortune of training to prepare for that, and hopefully it'll work. Conditioning is something that any racer can do to help in ski racing, and the Aspen women certainly have accomplished that. We have tried to simulate the pain of a burning quad muscle, uh, like standing in a tuck or jumping, uh, to try to uh, get our bodies to be used to this pain. It certainly is a beautiful spot to train, isn't it? Talking to people around Aspen, they can't believe the condition these two women are in. Rollerblading, I'm not so sure about tucking on inline skates. But then again, I'm not so sure about skiing for 24 hours. Canada is coming in. The team from Canada, we have heard, reaching the top. However, Ian Sullivan arrives alone. Chris Kent, burdened with the flu, dropping out of the competition. On the lift ride up, last run, I just said, that's it. I, I, I had three runs. I was, I was starting to catch edges. I was, uh, I was losing my form in the air. And uh, I just feel good. Plus, I haven't been able to eat well. And my stomach is upset. And, uh, uh, just have that general systemic weakness throughout my system. Again, like my actual muscular strength hasn't been too bad. I, I feel good on my skis, but um, what it does, it allows me to go very, very fast, but maybe not as sharp as I should be. And, and uh, so I just made that decision and I, I encouraged Ian to go on and finish the 24 hours. And uh, so I just sort of had the last run. I led it all the way down, showed him the line that I wanted to ski. And, I bow out. Unfortunately, the 1993 winner out of the Land Rover, 24 hours of Aspen. At 6.30 p.m., three teams have withdrawn. The Austrians are in first place, Germany second, and the Aspen men third. When sports cream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, 
when muscles hurt. Why Sports Cream? Massaging Sports Cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell, no odor. Why Sports Cream? Because it works. Rule number 20, sticks. Rule number 25, to play the game, use a puck. To get ESPN2, call your local cable company. The NHL rules on ESPN2. Well, Jennifer, it's getting a little bit windy up here and also darkness, it's a bad combination. Yeah, it's getting a little colder. It's about seven o'clock in the evening. Racers are feeling strong though. I think there's a little bit of a lull time where they're kind of looking around saying, oh, it's dark, but they're strong. Well, we'll see how tough they are. It's a long way to go. That's right, it's a fast course. They're trying to keep focus and concentrating on the racing and I think they're doing a good job. Oh, it's also getting lonely. Hard to imagine what it's like going 80, 85, 90 miles an hour through the darkness. Even though this course is well lit, there's still some dark spots. And the Aspen men have passed the team from Great Britain. They're making their move. Looks like the team from Great Britain getting a little bit tired in here. And the Swiss still right behind each other. The wind coming up on Aspen Mountain adding to the problems of skiing for 24 hours. But the Austrians look strong. They still have the lead. They even brought their own masseuse with them. Germans didn't bring any masseuse. Martin Fiala just off the World Cup circuit, where they only race one time down the mountain. It's a kind of new experience to me, and thank Michael that he took me to Aspen and that I'm able to, to race this race. It's a, it's a crazy one, and I admire him to, to do this stuff three times. I don't know if I want to make it next year again. <laughs> oh, it's a tough one, you know. It's something outstanding, and I think it's, yeah, we, we're quite doing well, you know. The Austrians, they are really good. But uh, I think, you know, it's taken 24 hours and then we, then we talk. Well, at least they do get to talk on the lift on the ride up. But they're not quite as close to each other as some of the other teams. Not the opportunity to draft. After 32 laps, the Germans in second place behind the Austrians. And only by four tenths of a second. The Aspen women approaching Kleenex Corner, perhaps not the fastest place in the race course, but by far the most difficult. Several of the racers have gone into the nets right after the turn. Uh, we have been working on Kleenex Corner to try to make it clean, uh, yeah. but it changes all the time, so we have to change with it. We're trying to stay and not get bounced around too much. It's pretty chattery there, and you don't want to waste a lot of energy just being bumped around by those chatters. So I think that's something where we will work on every single run until <laughs> noon <laughs> tomorrow. And certainly the course workers staying up all night with the racers doing their job. One of the main reasons that the times are so fast is the techs are doing such a great job waxing, preparing the skis, and so on. And another reason is when they come around Kleenex Corner and they drop into Little Nell, we shorten that length so they're able to get into the Little Nell a little earlier than in the years past, which creates a lot more speed. Um, there are natural transitions through the course, but there's nothing really abrupt developing. So I think the racers are very happy with the course conditions so far. They sure are happy with it. As a matter of fact, this course is almost 15 seconds faster than last year. And racers from around the world competing in the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen, obviously to win, but also to support kids. Earlier at the Hotel Jerome, a benefit was held for a foundation called Kid Stuff, founded in 1980 by retired tennis star Andrea Yeager. Kid Stuff brings children with cancer and life-threatening conditions to Aspen for a week of adventure in the Rocky Mountains. We bring kids year-round. In summertime, they go whitewater rafting and play tennis and go horseback riding. And, and of course, winter, their favorite thing skiing. And they've had some great instructors. I mean, Gela and, and Cato have been taking them out on buttermilk, and they just, they'll never be the same. It's been great. Don Johnson and Kevin Costner helped out. 
These are real heroes and incredible athletes. Uh, it's an event that is really um, community oriented to Aspen, and I think it's just special because of that reason specifically. Um, hearts really found when the event takes place. Um, the community shows up to support it, and I believe that uh, it's really a part of anyone who participates year after year. The benefit is also in support of a local charity called Ask. Aspen supports kids where 1,500 youngsters in the valley receive the opportunity to ski. We'll be right back. There are places much easier to cross in the air. All it takes is the right equipment. A Land Rover Discovery. It'll get you anywhere. And you're guaranteed a window seat. The Wall Street Journal keeps you on the cutting edge with news and insights that can affect you personally and professionally. Subscribe now and have the journal delivered to your home or office. Now, with your paid 10-week subscription, you'll also receive our gift of two weeks free. That's 12 weeks of the journal for just 65 cents a day. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call now, 800-356-9800. That's 800-356-9800 for the Wall Street Journal. I'm in the mood for something special. Burgers and fries. Think bigger than that. Surf and turf. Surf and turf. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's back and bigger and hotter than ever. It's supermodels and superstars. It's surf and turf from Sports Illustrated. Isn't it fun? Get things rocking with Total Impact, SI's newest NFL video, hosted by Steve Young and Burton Hanks. It's an over-the-top look at the toughest game in town. Then, SI takes you to paradise with our exclusive new video, The Making of the Swimsuit Issue 96. Go behind the scenes with the most beautiful women in the world. Call now and get both videos free. When you order 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue, save 50% off the cover price. Use your credit card. Surf and Turf from Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Midnight. The 24 hours of Aspen continues, and the locals are having a great time. And many of them have come to help out. We're getting coffee and soup for volunteers, yeah. for whoever's hungry. We're waiting for our coffee cups. Because we want to help our community. Yeah, we're from Aspen High School. Yeah. And part of National Honor Society, so we have to get 50 hours of community service in. So that's why we're here. <laughs> Nearly 600 local people have come out to help make this event work. As the leading team, the Austrians, kick off the start. And the Germans right behind them. The Aspen men, Nate Bryan, Tyler Williams, currently third and trying to make a move up the ladder. Um, pretty good. Your legs burn, you know. On the way down, head back. Just gets worked in the finish. Finish is getting rough. Some of the compressions this year, there's a lot more terrain because there's less snow. And when you go into those compressions, you suck it up in your back and it's a little sore. Especially after 42 runs. After 42 runs, imagine that, and the Swiss coming down through Kleenex Corner. In fourth position, just a few seconds behind the Aspen men. And the team from Great Britain. When we asked them why they loved it so much. They said it was the atmosphere, the excitement, the challenge, and the jacuzzi we're going to have after it's all over. The Aspen women, sixth position, hoping that they're 
solid conditioning will pull them up in the standings in the later hours of the competition. The team from Argentina getting ready to start. Skis stolen in Vail, and Edwin Hamilton and Morgan had to give up the competition. They gave their skis to them. While the racers run over and over, a key to their success is waxing. Most have three different pairs of skis, specially tuned by waxing technicians who stay on top of the mountain in what certainly has to be called a team effort. What we're doing is changing the wax for colder conditions and trying to match with the snow. So as, as the temperatures start dropping, we change the structure, keep the edge polish up, and then change the wax. And I'm putting on a special wax right now called Sarah F. What does that do? Um, what it is is it um, actually repels water. So it's a very expensive wax, sells for $120 for a little bottle like this. And uh, it goes really fast. Meanwhile, Jennifer found a party. There's a party on top of the mountain at the summit of Aspen Mountain called the Hard Rock on Top Party. It's an incredible event. The only way to get there is via the gondola. And then once inside, there's a fun band going. There's great food, people milling around. It's a great time for everybody. So we just want everybody to have a great time and help donate money to the charities and cheer on the racers. I just, I think it's excellent. The owner of the Hard Rock's really committed to children and helping children that, that need funds and that's what, why we're here. There's lots of people up, up at the top having a good time. It was quite a scene. Sure was quite a scene. As a matter of fact, it seems I saw quite a few of my Aspen pals up there. Meanwhile, back on the race course, the lights are out. Not very easy to race when that happens. The race delayed one hour and 45 minutes. That time to be added at the end. No one ever said it would be easy, but finally back to racing. Meanwhile, problems for the German team. The Kleenex corner, I lost two times my ski and the second time I blowed my knee. So I had to try after the break. And you know it's working, but uh, I'm afraid when I, when I go deeper than this, will be totally, uh, I've got a lot of pain, so we decided to stop. A smart decision by Martin Fiella from Germany. At 3 a.m. after 46 laps, it's Austria, the Aspen men, and Switzerland. At Aramark, we know great things happen when people work together. part of something bigger. When you take pride in how you look. When you know you're a team. At Aramark, we know great things happen when you put on a uniform. Aramark Uniform Services, America's largest uniform company. Hello, I'm Tom Kite, and I'd like to tell you about a magazine that takes you where the news is breaking. Golf World, the number one news magazine in golf. Golf World brings you in-depth coverage of all major tournaments more than 40 times a year, weekly during peak season. Get more than 40 news-breaking issues for just $23.77, 40% off the regular subscription price. Order now and get 10 swings from the tour free with your paid subscription. Call 800-854-3100. That's 800-854-3100. 
If you're into college hoops, then you want to see all the big names and all the best games. But if you're not getting ESPN2, then you're missing out. On February 13th, Allen Iverson leads the way when the Hoyas travel north to face Boston College and big man Donye Abrams. Then, on February 17th, catch towering Tim Duncan and the Demon Deacons as they try to contain Georgia Tech's terrific twosome, Stephon Marbury and Drew Barry. So if you like ball but you're not getting it all, call your local cable operator or satellite provider and ask for ESPN2. Welcome back. 6 a.m., the Land Rover. 24 hours of Aspen continues. The Austrians in the lead. We're in the third position. And we're still going. And I guess we stay there till the race is finished. I'm sure we stay there. My biggest competition, our biggest competition is a crash. No, a crash. If we crash now, that would be a problem. The rest, we should be able to get it home. Any crash in downhill ski racing is a problem. Particularly after a long night. Second place, the Aspen man at the bottom. In third position, Kinchy and Seba from Switzerland. Catching up on the Aspen men. Right behind them in fourth position, team from Great Britain, Martin Bell and Malcolm Erskine. They sure know how to enjoy life. Back home in London, a little bit of conditioning for this event. As a matter of fact, they <laughs> took conditioning to a different level on, what would you call this, mats, artificial snow, you name it. Getting ready for the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. Oh, well, here I am in Aspen, looking down on the city. Here I am in Aspen, looking down on the city. It's just a shame that I feel so tired. Well, tired or not, <laughs> they seem to be having a great time. It's starting to snow a little bit in Aspen. But watch out, guys. The Aspen women right behind in fifth position. And we know they're in great shape. And Greg Trinker, he's in good shape, too. He's been up all night working the computer, keeping the results going. Tremendous help to us. And also to the media attending this event. The Swiss trying to close the gap on the Aspen men. And to how do some of the locals feel about this event? The idea of somebody doing 250,000 vertical feet in 24 hours is incredible. <laughs> I work hard to do one non-stop run. It's a pretty awesome race. Pretty, uh, I don't know, fitness of the people are unbelievable. I, I wouldn't be able to do it, that's for sure. <laughs> Racers, well, I think they're crazy. They gotta have their head examined. They courageous. <laughs> yeah, but courageous, <laughs> courageous too, yeah. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Just how they can just keep on going and pushing and right. for such a great cause. It sure is a great cause, and these youngsters, stricken with cancer, having a great time in Aspen, Colorado. Also joined by a man that you may recognize, Mr. Paul Newman. Haven't seen Mr. Newman on skis, but he sure is having a great time out in the snow. On the other hand, you've watched him race cars. Anything is possible. The Aspen Winter Sports Club is also very pleased about this event. Because of that support, a program called Ask Aspen Supports Kids helps 1,500 youngsters in the valley ski who otherwise might not have that opportunity. Stay with us. We'll be back. With a waterfall. And little white caps shaped by the breeze. 
There's a hotel. And hundreds of air-conditioned rooms. Mini bars, no doubt. Look. A Range Rover. Ah, oh. yes. A 4.0 SE. And a smashing woman giving caviar to that chap. I see an igloo. Yes. Some women you forget a minute after the door shuts. Some disappear from memory halfway down the hall. And then there are women like Velma, who sit there like an itch you can't scratch and you find yourself at some all-night diner with your tortured thoughts and a cup of hazelnut vanilla roast coffee. Better make that 100% Colombian coffee. 100% Colombian coffee. Anything else just doesn't sound as good. It's the richest coffee in the world. And then you walk out into the cold. You take your lips in the wind and into the snow. So you better take your chapstick wherever you go. Chapstick. Chapstick protects. Love your lips. It moisturizes. To help heal dry chapped lips for healthy lips. Chapstick. College basketball. There used to be some on. That was okay. And there was more. For a while, that seemed like plenty. But wouldn't it be cool if you could see more of the games you wanted? Your school's games, the games that matter most, the late season matchups that make the difference leading up to the big dance. Well, the ball's in your court. You just gotta contact your local cable operator or direct TV, and they'll hook you up to ESPN full court. It's your season subscription to the NCAA. The Land Rover, 24 hours of Aspen has been brought to you by Land Rover, the maker of legendary British off-road vehicles. Welcome back to Aspen. It is now 10 a.m. The Austrian team in the lead. Notice these shiny outfits. Many of the races have complained, saying that because of those shiny outfits, they can go a lot faster. And the problem is that if they were to fall, they would just keep right on sliding. Something to be discussed for another year, though. Nothing in the rules. From Switzerland, Andre Kinchy and Roger Sieber. Not a lot of preparation for this event back in their home of Davos. And as they train here around the lake in their beautiful community, well known around the world, they are also foresters when they are not ski instructors in the wintertime. Two good friends. Working together, skiing together, and racing together. It's a long way from 80 laps down the mountain in Aspen, Colorado. And as it comes down at the finish, Kinchy goes right into the fence. No injury, right back on his feet. A little help from the workers here, and on to the lift. That last little crash wasn't really necessary, was it? No, but I'm out of power, so, and we have to do some time good, so, because that meant they are only around seven seconds ahead of us. And, uh, yeah, so I went through the finish, and there is so rough at the bottom. I had no chance to stop. And that's what happens when you race over and over on a course. It does get rough, particularly here on Kleenex Corner, as we see the Aspen women coming through. Jennifer Gardner rode up the lift with them. How's the corner, Kleenex Corner? Kleenex Corner is pretty rough, but we're getting better at it. We've had right. some practice. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. So. Good. Everybody is so excited down there. A lot of people. Well, that's who we're doing it for. All the community and the two great causes. And um, it really is a great thing to come into a good home crowd and yeah. feel like you've given something back to them. It is a great cause. and something that a lot of the people here in Aspen, Colorado can really get into. Yeah. Stay warm. The volunteers up all night giving blankets and nourishment Oh, the racers sure appreciate the support. How you guys doing? Got that Good in Good Meanwhile, on the fastest part of the race course. 87. Not bad. 
Nothing like a little loan from our local sheriff's department. Imagine going this fast and being this close at such high speeds. The Aspen women on Spar Gulch. 89 miles an hour. The speeds get faster. And the Austrians, the number one team. 94 for the first Austrian, I'll tell you. That is really trucking. Sure is trucking. And the team from Argentina on the top of the mountain, and the spirits are still alive. We'll be right back with the final runs. Catch some air to Aspen Snowmass. This winter, four different airlines are flying to Aspen from four major cities. Los Angeles, Dallas, Minneapolis, and Denver. Fly non-stop into the heart of Aspen. The airport is just two miles from downtown. This winter, you'll find lower fares and great skiing. Isn't it time you skied Aspen? For reservations and information, call 1-800-26-ASPEN. Land Rover Discoveries frequently come home slightly more soiled than ordinary cars. But they still get washed exactly the same way. With soap and water. At the SV Awards, be tactful when asked about your groin pull, Mr. Richter. Dropping your trousers and pointing out specifics can be a trifle unseemly. Welcome back. The final runs of the Land Rover 24 Hours of Aspen. The 79th lap for the team from Switzerland. And they still look fresh. Maybe they're excited because they're finished. They're in third place. Five seconds behind the team from Aspen, the men's team. This is the women's team. They're in sixth position. A very solid performance by them. And the Aspen men trying to hold on to that second place. Last year's winners. And the winning team. Enjoying themselves coming down with a big lead, the team from Austria. And the Aspen women coming in. Everyone really supporting them out here as they finish sixth. Happy to be done. Yeah, we felt really strong in the end, and I think that's where training really shows off. Everybody can ski fast the first couple of hours, but then if you can hang in there and ski fast for 25 hours, um, that's when you trained well. Absolutely. Give a lot of support. We love you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Aspen men, last year's winners, settling this year for second place. And the happiest team of all, from Kitzbühel, Austria, they'll be welcome home. Great performance by them. Guys, great going to you. It was terrific. They're going to be happy in Kitzbühel. Yeah, they're really happy there. But both we are happy too. I can't tell it. How's it feel? Great, great. Great, like the first time we were here. 92 and won it. The, uh, what do you think What do you think did it this year? You were second last year, real close, and this year you came out of there, you guys were really tough, right from the start. Uh, we started very hard, and look at the skis, they're really fast. <laughs> we're in a very good shape, and till midnight we're going very, very quick, as fast as we can. And then we find out that all the other guys a little bit behind us, so we go a little bit slower, decided, no crashes like this, and it works, you know. And don't worry, Mom, if you're watching from Kitzbühel, those tattoos on his cheek will wash off. <laughs> 